Mm, blood and drama, gotta love it. Ooh, that's a hot mug, guys. Hey guys, this is my review for Supernatural Season 3, Episode 7, Fresh Blood. Sorry for the delay, it's been a little while. I kind of lost a little bit of motivation a little recently, but it's coming back now. This episode is just as good as I remember. This is one of the best send-offs for a villain in this show in a while, because the Gordon Walker character, played by Sterling K. Brown, very well played by him. Even though he's not in that many episodes throughout this entire show, I think he's only in like five episodes, he still is one of the best villains, especially human villains that the show has ever had. And seeing him be turned into the very thing that he hates, the very thing that he hunts, was a fantastic way to to bring this character to a close in terms of a really cool, gory send-off. The brothers come to the city, which has all these women being turned into vampires and going around hunting and attacking people at random. They find Blondie at the beginning, who's just like, ow, oh, I'm just so hungry. I joke about her voice, but I think it gives her more of a vulnerable sort of tenure to it, and it makes having to obviously kill her a little bit more difficult for the brothers. And then we see that Gordon's gotten out and him and Jesus guy are after the brothers. All the while the brothers are after the vampire who's kind of giving women the worst kind of roofie drink of all time. The two come to a head and they have actually a pretty cool shootout. But then Gordon gets knocked out by the vampire. And then the vampire decides to turn Gordon Walker. And that is probably one of the best scenes in the episode because we see Gordon just in absolute terror and pain and rage and fear of being turned into the very thing that he has hated his whole life. While on the other side though, the guy who plays the vampire, he's definitely one of those actors. And by those actors, I mean this guy tried to make a magnum opus for his own character, even though he's a one-off monster. He's one of those guys who's like, but what is my life story? What did I eat? What drove me to this? How do I shit? You find a lot of these out here in the Vancouver film scene and he just over dramatizes his character so much. You can see he's trying to do some interview with a vampire kind of shit in this episode and it just kind of makes it very corny. Especially when the brothers come to his warehouse and they find out what he's done and he's got this terrible crying effect on his eyes and he's just hamming it. Just hamming it. Oh, and I also forgot Bella's in this episode for a very short amount of time. It's how, in fact, Gordon finds the brothers because she makes a deal with him. Well, he's pointing a gun at her face and she's like, I don't get out of bed for three grand, darling. After Gordon gets turned into a monster, he then kind of goes on a bit of a tirade and, and we see him slowly progress into the evil monster. We see him attack a human on the street. We see him rip the heart out of the Jesus guy on the RV, and you see he is upset, you see he is pain-stricken with what he's done, but his want to kill Sam and his own self-survival is driving him towards these evil acts. Again, Sterling K. Brown, really, really fantastic actor, fantastic choice for this character. Dean wants to go out and take Gordon on by himself, but Sam has it starts off as like, oh great, here we go again. And then just th he says that I've been looking up to you ever since I was four years old. I've always wanted to be like my big brother. And that's what I just want you to be to me again. I want you to be my brother just because. And I'm just sitting on the back going. <sighs> it's a little sappy, sure, but it's so good because this is when it wasn't overdone to death like the show is done now. This is when it was still genuine. Miss this shit, yo. So Dean has a bit of a realization about how he's been acting and he sees now that he can't hide what he's feeling from Sam anymore. So they decide to hide out in the hotel room, but then the second bad thing in this episode happens. Somehow, Gordon is able to call a burner phone that Dean got two hours previous because he could smell their scent in the cell phone store. That doesn't mean he knows how to get the number. Maybe he killed the teller or something like that. I don't know, it's a stretch. It's a big stretch. I wouldn't have cared if he just called Dean's other cell phone, the cell phone that he actually uses. So then they go to the warehouse to try and save the girl that Gordon has used as a bait, but he's actually turned her into a vampire and Dean and her have a little bit of face off. And Sam and Gordon have this fantastic fight in a blacked out, warehouse. It doesn't look blacked out because of lighting, but it's supposed to be. And this is Kim Manners doing his best interpretation of 
the fight with Buffalo Bill at the end of Silence of the Lambs. How Sam's moving around, the use of the red vampire vision as aside from night vision, and then how the camera is centered on Gordon's mouth for what he's saying during the scene. And then just the fight is so dope and he rips his fucking head off with the barbed wire, even though I don't know how the barbed wire would cut through bone, but it's still so cool. Watching it again reminded me of how I felt when I was watching it as a teenager. I remember getting up off the couch and being like, yeah, rip his head off. It was really cool. And then we end with Dean handing over the wrench to Sam saying, hey, you gotta learn how to do this. I'm not gonna be around forever. It ends on a pretty good note. In the end, Fresh Blood is one of the best episodes of season three by far. It is the best episode we've come across. It has a great villain. It has a great finale. It has some fantastic moments with the brothers just between themselves. And it's got some cool action and some cool concepts. The only negatives from this episode is the inexplicable cell phone and melodramatic vampire bitch. And it's really unfortunate because whiny bitch here aside, if it was just him in this episode, I would have given this episode a seven out of seven. But the cell phone part makes no fucking sense. Unfortunately, I'm going to give Fresh Blood a six out of seven. It's still a goddamn good episode. It's definitely going to be in the top five for the season. I was really close to giving it a seven. But then when the cell phone part came up, I was like, oh, damn it. And the next episode is going to be a supernatural Christmas. And what better time of the year to review a Christmas episode than in the middle of fucking July? It's like Hallmark. Ooh. So make sure to give me your guys' thoughts about that episode in the comments below. I will be reading off this one and previous ones in a video soon because I will be probably putting them at the end of the episodes again in a little bit of a shorter amount of time, but I'll see them. That's still up in the air. Anyways, guys, that's all from me. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, leave a like, and if you're interested in more, subscribe. Otherwise, see you guys next time. Thanks for watching the video. My name is Nitz, and you might remember me from the animated cult classic TV show, Undergrads. It's been a while, but I'm happy to say the click is finally getting back together in an all new movie, thanks to a successful Kickstarter campaign but we are still asking for your support. To see any and all updates about the upcoming Undergrads movie, be sure to check out and like the Bring Back Undergrads Facebook page. And with any luck, we'll see you guys soon.